everybody. Creative Katie, Karen Birdshill here. Welcome to my channel, Mixed Media Creations. Take the time to subscribe to my channel and select the option to get notified as soon as I upload a new one. You won't miss any that way. Here we have a series, 12 Days of Christmas. 12 mixed media art journal tutorials, all in a Christmas theme. I hope you enjoy this series. Links to supplies can be found in the description box below, as always. So today I'm going to use things in my mixed media stash that I don't typically use in mixed media canvases anymore to make these wine bottle gift tags that you see demonstrated here. These were kind of sample ones to see what I can do and what weight of paper I needed, but I'm going to walk you through the step-by-step -step to doing this easy and fun project. So let's just put these aside, grab my coffee, and here are the tags that I cut using my Cameo Silhouette. Now, I bought the cut file from Silhouette and I had it done, but you can, if you have the pattern of this, cut this by hand using a hole punch or even using the X-Acto knife to cut the circle part. The one from the Cameo is kind of perforated along this fold mark, which makes it a little bit easier, but, you know, that's not difficult to fold it down. Now, I just did this on Canson Mixed Media Paper. I just ripped a page out of my book and used it on my silhouette. I also did some on cardstock, and it didn't hold up as well, but you could get by. So today, I'm really thrilled to be able to use my Distress Oxides and my Distress Inks. Now, I bought these because I love what they can do, but I don't really use them in my mixed media art journal pages, or in, on my canvases. So it was one of those supplies that, you know, I invested money in that I haven't really used. So I'm thrilled to be able to use them and do some of those fun techniques with them, and I'll walk you through those. Now here is how I store the blending tools for all my Distress inks, both the oxides and otherwise. And I'll put a link to the video where I talk specifically about this and give you all the details for it. So I just dug out all the colors and as I said before I have distress oxides and I have just regular distress inks and you know I'm just going to have fun. Now I chose these because I didn't want to put a whole lot of water onto the tags and this is a fairly dry medium. Now this one I kept white and I don't mind it, but white's really hard to keep clean. And when I want to give this as a gift and things, I kind of wanted it a little bit more high-end, I guess. So, you know, as I said, these were my samples, and that's why I've chosen the Distress inks. I'm also going to use my Julie Nutting doll stamps and links to the supplies can be found as always in the description box below. So I'm just going to be using a variety of colors on these these tags. Now what you see here are just they're the base of a teacher stamp and I ripped off the good luck or good spelling or a good job and I've just put velcro there and it's perfect for the blending tools to go on to. And I'm just using the blending tools to apply the ink. Now you could do this all solid color. I just like to add a little bit more interest. And while the distress oxides you can layer them different colors and they won't make mud once it's dry. I'm still pretty much sticking to colors that are close to each other on the color wheel. And then for the most part, I'm edging it with whatever the darkest color is, kind of in that color family, just to give it a nice finishing edge. Now the bad part with the distress inks, you got to clean up as you go. I don't want the backside to get all colored and I don't want the next set of tags. 
So I'm using a whole variety of my Crafters Workshop stencils. And as you can see, I'm using doing two tags at a time. So here I'm spraying water through the stencil and then letting it sit for a couple seconds and then pulling it off. And that just leaves that very fine pattern and interest there. That's one of the cool techniques. But you can do that with other mediums. And check out my technique tag videos because I talk about how to do it with acrylic paints and other mediums. So here I've gone blues and purples. And then I think I'm going to do this kind of peacock colors. And there I'm edging it again, just to make it a little darker and finished. So grabbing a stencil, and I'm pretty sure I'm gonna grab my peacock feathers from the Crafters Workshop. And I will list these all these stencils in the description box. Here I'm inking through the stencil on this one, and this one I'm going to spray through the stencil and lift off the color. Now I'm not too worried if it's not exactly perfect because I am going to do some stamping and put some sentiments on here. This one I went green and blue. Oh, green and yellow. And blue. <laughs> looks very spring-like. This is the Art Is Script Stencil. And I'm stenciling through, through it with one color. And then I'm just kind of bumping the stencil, getting it into a different place, and going with another color. I must say, I had so much fun creating these tags and being able to play with all the wonderful qualities this Distress inks and Distress Oxides have. This is Big Wreath, and I'm just using the foliage part. They kind of look like grape leaves to me. So I'm quite happy with how this is going. These minis are just the regular Distress inks. Cannot remember this. This is one of the newest, the, the summer 2018 releases. And I just went through the stencil. This one's Snakeskin. If you only have the the six by six, they will work as well. You may have to move them a little bit, but we're not doing anything so precise. This is simply creating an interesting back background, visually texturized background. Love this abandoned coral color, and I believe that's fired brick both both my favorites I think this one's called ripples and it's a stencil I've had for years but I've hardly used it but it's quickly climbing up into my favorites so one I sprayed through and then I just flipped it over on the water so you get kind of the reverse pattern there. I think I have seedless preserves and wilted violet here. But use whatever purple color you have. It's not about the exact colors. This is looking very grapealicious. So I grab out the big wreath stencil again. I 
and I'm cleaning the ink off of the stencils because I don't want to transfer it on to other ones. And this time I'm spraying through the stencil and lifting off the ink. Now one of the advantages of doing a huge session where you're coloring lots of the same kind of thing is you tend to free up a little bit as you keep moving through it and get a little bit more adventuresome with your color choices and you end up with some interesting and wonderful um, color combinations. I find that when I do gel printing as well, I start out and it's very controlled. And then at some point, my brain just clicks off and creativity clicks on. So now that those are all dried, and I did let them dry overnight, I'm just using the Tim Holtz stamping platform here to stamp the Julie Nutting dolls right onto the tags. Now, i am said it before, I am not a stamper. I'm not a card maker. And... You know, so I feel very awkward stamping, and I do not necessarily do the best job. But the stamping platform made this so, so, so much easier because I was, if I didn't get a good stamp the first time, I could just re ink and re stamp. And it just made the work so, so, so quick and easy. This doll and the stamp where I want it, it's kind of awkward. And the stamp seems to be falling off. I did clean it and it did seem to stick a little bit better later on. This one wasn't sticking, so I'm just doing it old school. And then I decide I want to paint them. So I'm using just Delta Serum Coat um, skin tone color and I'm painting all the skin tone. Now it picks up some of the distress ink from the background and you know especially the blue ones or the purple ones kind of show through the skin tone but you know it still looks good and when I started using a round brush it went a lot quicker and easier. In the past, when I've done the Julie Nutting doll, I've, you know, cut out the clothing and, you know, stamped it on dictionary paper and cut out the clothing from gel prints and then glued it on. And so there's a lot of cutting. And I did not want to do that much cutting on here. So painting in this way was quite quick, actually. And my main focus here was just having different colors and a good variety. The darker tags, the you know, I used darker hair color, and the lighter ones I used lighter hair color, just so it would stand out. I have sped through this part of the video. I've increased it quite a bit because I don't think you know you don't need to watch, but I you know some of the variations and stuff. I just put all the colors out there, and I'm mixing the colors right on the brush. So I've got brown and gold and yellow and dark brown and black and then I do the same with the dresses and I love how some of that distress ink has come through and it just almost adds the shading and highlights to the clothing that I'm painting on. I did stop long enough and I thought you know I could almost just get away with having the clothing be whatever pattern was in the tag
And as with the hair colors, I am usually have more than one color on my brush just to make it a little bit more interesting and not so flat. And I'm just using Delta Cerem Coat or Americana Craft Paint here. And very little water because I don't want the tags to, to warp. I found this process quite, quite relaxing and enjoyable. If you don't want to paint it on you, and if you're a colorer, you can use your um, pencil crayons or markers. Whatever works best for you. I did try the Inktense blocks, but I, I like the Delta Serum Coat and the, the craft paint better. And you can see how the interesting background just kind of falls to the back. So even if it's not perfect, it's perfect. So once these girls were all painted, I got out some wine related sayings and I just typed up a whole bunch and I selected a font that I liked that would work and you know played around a little bit with the sizes but some of these quotes are quite lengthy so I didn't want it to be too big and I'm just cutting it to size and fitting it on the cards for the tags. Once cut out, I just used some gel medium and glued it down. And I was really surprised that even when I was applying the gel medium to the tag, uh, yeah, I was being careful. It didn't reactivate it hardly. I was expecting it to reactivate a lot more and cause me a lot more grief. You could have used a glue stick here. Or you could have print this out onto sticker paper and just peeled and stuck. Then I get out my fine liner bottle and I go around all the sayings and around the outside of the tag. Right about now my battery dies on my camera, but no, never fear. Here is a close up of all the finished tags that I created. I had so much fun using my distress inks, both the oxides and the regular ones. I'm so glad I found a way to use things that are in my stash that I don't use a whole lot in my art right now. So go to your stash, pull out something and create with it. Give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment if you like this video, if you want to see something in particular. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.